everyone. Welcome to today's IAUG webinar, Avaya Messaging Roadmap, presented by Cyril Dowling, Senior Product Manager at Avaya. Before we begin, I want to take the opportunity to thank you for participating in today's webinar and for your support in IAUG. To our current members and those that are now new members by means of joining us today, I encourage you to visit IAUG.org to get more information about how to get the most out of your membership, including upcoming events, IAUG product councils, and a library of online content. Now I have three quick housekeeping items to go over. First, today's webinar will be recorded and available for you on demand. Second, a Q&A session will fo follow today's presentation. All questions will need to be entered in the question window near the bottom of your GoToWebinar screen. And third, there will be a short online evaluation that pops up as you exit the webinar. Please take a minute and let us know what you thought of today's session and what you might like to see going forward. All right, let's get started. Cyril, I'll turn it over to you now. Thank you, Julie. Uh, so thanks everyone for joining. And I wanted to cover uh, basically the messaging, not only the roadmap, but this kind of the strategy for what we're doing with messaging and talk about um, kind of the, the convergence into uh, via messaging and then also our kind of our future, like what we are investing in right now and developing. So I'll give you a, kind of a sneak peek of uh, what's happening there as well. Um, and as Julie said, if you have questions, just put them in the in the question uh, box as well. And uh, I will uh, allow some time at the end of the presentation to to respond to those questions. So let's get started. So basically, Avaya's messaging portfolio. Uh, the strategy was to take a lot of the uh, existing messaging or legacy messaging platforms and kind of converge them into one. Um, and that was like we have uh, at that at one point, you know, we have Call Pilot for your CS1K, you have a via uh, modular messaging as well, uh, CM messaging, and then a via Aura messaging. So the idea was to kind of converge all of those uh, into these uh, three very simple objectives. Uh, that I looked at, and that was to simplify and converge those messaging offers into Avaya Messaging, which is a premise-based uh, messaging platform. Uh, it also create a migration path from those legacy products as well to uh, the Avaya Messaging platform. <clears throat> and we've done that through either utilities or through um, like our ProVision tool that services uses to, to migrate mailboxes. And then also to the third objective was to look at the future in terms of delivering a cloud-based messaging platform, uh, which we'll get into more details on in a few minutes here. So this was the overall strategy and we're pretty much through uh, the majority of that strategy in terms of the, that migration and delivering those legacies. And then uh, we're focusing on uh, what is the next generation as well. So from your perspective, of course, most of you being customers here are on uh, either a third party platform or you're on one of Avaya's uh, messaging platforms and it could be legacy or it could be office links or Avaya messaging. So this, this particular slide gives you a path um, by which we're gonna help you journey uh, on that path through to uh, the end game or the end result, which is um, a next generation cloud system. So uh, you'll start with your legacy, which is kind of the, either your, your ESNA office links or your call pilot modular messaging, CM messaging or a messaging. And we have the capabilities today to transition you and migrate you over to the next generation platform, which is Avaya a Messaging. Now we've been delivering Avaya Messaging. It was once called Office Links. Um, in the early days, it did change its name to Avaya IX Messaging. And, uh, and then it's been renamed again to simply Avaya Messaging. Uh, not to get it confused with Avaya Aura Messaging, uh, but this is Avaya Messaging. And um, so this was, uh, with, been around for probably within Avaya for about five years now um, that we had uh, 
have uh, received this or obtained this product through the ESNA acquisition, um, as well as Spaces. So if you're familiar with Spaces, that again came from that ESNA acquisition. Uh, CPaaS, when you hear of CPaaS technologies, that again came from that ESNA acquisition. Um, so the Avaya Messaging or Office Links IX messaging platform uh, it had the latest uh, you know, technology or feature set. It enabled us to integrate better with like unified messaging into Office 365 or Google Apps, which is the product that we chose I, again. Now, uh, you know, the only, I guess, downside to that product would have been it's heavily invested. It's a, it was about 15 years of development on that product. There's, there's probably about 15 million lines of code in that product, um, and it's Windows-based. So primarily, uh, that was the, the, you know, we went from our legacy platforms, especially with Aura Messaging on Linux, to a Windows-based application. Um, we decided at one point that, you know, the, the benefits outweighed uh, the drawbacks, uh, but also uh, we have a plan to, you know, replace that in the future as well. So the next generation premise-based application has been Avaya Messaging, and we continue to migrate customers uh, to that platform today. Uh, we do, we're on average, about four to 500 installs per quarter, uh, and that continues to grow globally uh, around the world. We have over 4,000 installs of Avaya um, Messaging uh, globally. And then, in the right part of this uh, slide is uh, what are we doing next? So I'll introduce you to the next generation cloud-based uh, platform, uh, which is called the Virtual Assistance Platform. The Virtual Assistance Platform is made up of currently of three uh, products today uh, that we'll be looking at developing and offering, which is the Virtual Operator. That's your traditional um, auto attended product using DTMF. We may add some, some speech capabilities to that. Uh, or your virtual agent, which is a, an auto attended, but it, it's using natural language, uh, natural speech uh, from the user. So the difference being, hey, you know, uh, welcome to ABC company. The operator application would say, press one for this, press two for that, and so on. Uh, the virtual agent would say, welcome to ABC company, how may I help you today? Uh, and then it listens for your, your language. Uh, and then the third product under that virtual assistance platform is the virtual messaging uh, component, which we'll talk about as well in, in some detail. So that gives you kind of a, a view of, uh, as a customer, where you're at and, and where we are looking to take you. Uh, and it'll be, again, as it rolls out, um, if you're in that process of moving to uh, the Avaya messaging platform, uh, again, that's the premise-based platform. We'll still continue to, to deliver that and support that over the, the next few years. Uh, and as well, if you're thinking about making that move, then look at it from a timing perspective of where you might want to go uh, uh, to either the virtual assistance platform or to Avaya Messaging. And so I'll give you a bit more details about Avaya Messaging if you haven't, um, don't know much about that uh, application. So Avaya Messaging pretty much gives you your traditional voicemail uh, system. There's two types of licensed users. There's a basic user and advanced user, and there, there's some, you know, uh, more of the, the unified messaging capabilities is, is uh, reserved for the advanced licensed users. Uh, there is, uh, again, some other uh, features or capabilities that, that is provided to those advanced users. But you get your traditional voicemail, you get your unified messaging. So this would be both SMTP forwarding or it could use bi-directional synchronization between your email inbox and your voicemail box uh, using unified messaging. We can deliver this on a cloud uh, compute platform. It can be premise-based in your data center or in a hosted data center or hosted cloud compute environment. Uh, today, we are standardized on uh, AWS, Amazon's web services, as well as Azure, Microsoft's uh, cloud compute environment. 
Um, we have the capability to deliver both um, speech and fax uh, uh, messaging, as well as uh, transcription services. Um, there's also the capabilities of having a highly secure, encrypted, um, uh, JIDIC certified uh, uh, application as well uh, for those high secure environments. And then we have this concept of message multicasting, which is a kind of a form of unified messaging. So it gives you the ability to deliver that message to any one of your channels or your communication channels. You know, it can go to your desktop, your hard phone, it can go to your SMS as well as MMS to uh, a mobile phone or to um, uh, your computing environment. Now, the, the thing about uh, via messaging is that it's it's premise based. You know, there's some geo redundant capabilities. It can be geographically dispersed uh, in, within the multiple data centers. And again, it's it's designed for both uh, that as well as the cloud compute uh, architectures. Uh, so it's still an application that you would you would download, um, install, manage, and and maintain that that application over time. Today we only uh, we we're delivering release 11, which is the current release that we have out there today, and it's basically it's it's a perpetual license uh, offer with some add-on subscription services to it. That means you still get a support and upgraded advantage contract that goes with it um, and and like I said it's that premise based solution it has a lot of features and capabilities in it uh, I say that uh, you know one of the benefits of this application is its feature richness and flexibility it can do a lot uh, but it's also one of the hindrances of the system is its flexibility uh, because it can do a lot and not all of it is is completely well understood and documented so uh, it's a feature-rich voicemail system, basically. Uh, it can scale to its limits, which is 80,000 users, of which 40,000 of those 80,000 can be uh, advanced unified messaging synchronized users. This would be a direct bi-directional synchronization to your, your Exchange account, Office 365, or Google Apps uh, as well. So. Uh, safe and secure. It's got multi layers of resiliency that's built into it, um, but it is managed and maintained by the customer uh, and from that application perspective. Uh, we do offer it as well with our one cloud uh, managed service uh, uh, offer. Uh, that's what they use the Avaya messaging platform uh, uh, as well. Uh, so that, in a nutshell, is basically what the Avaya messaging is. Now, the news behind that is, of course, the roadmap uh, with respect to what we're doing with that application. Uh, and just the, this past June, uh, we released the uh, the first uh, major release in a number of years. So release 11 uh, came out. And uh, this, uh, we added a bit more uh, resiliency and redundancy capabilities in this application as well. We made it more robust, uh, uh, especially for Avaya's large enterprise type based customers. So uh, we built a lot more uh, uh, resiliency in that. Um, and again, we now supported the Microsoft Edge browser as well as the Azure qualification. Uh, we added more languages, so we've been building new languages into this application to kind of meet the equivalent of what we offered in Avaya Aura messaging, uh, somewhere around 19 to 21 different languages that it was built in. And I think uh, as of this release 11 with Arabic added to it, uh, we now support, I think, up to 19 languages with it. Um, so the, there was again more resiliencies, additional scaling was built into it. We added a nuance cloud transcription service to it. So we offer both nuance transcription service and Mutari's transcription service to the product. Um, we support VMware 7.0 release with it. And uh, we had a few other features that were kind of added into that release. Uh, going forward now, we just delivered, I think this week alone, we delivered the first service pack to it. So it was really about improving the quality, reducing a lot of the issues that were found in the field, um, and as well as starting to build 
our our path to the next generation product in, in this uh, service pack release. We do have another service pack release scheduled for March uh, of next year, and that primarily will be the end of the the major and uh, minor releases that we're delivering with this platform, uh, because we plan to offer uh, that virtual assistance platform starting in early next year as well. Uh, so uh, our investment or our resources will be migrating over to that next generation platform. So the future beyond March 2022 for this platform will be to transition that to our sustaining teams and tier four support teams as well uh, beyond that. So uh, that would be the plan, but we will, again, based on our life cycle management uh, policies, we will be continuing to uh, keep this product maintained and up to date and uh, support it over the next seven years uh, beyond that. So that's a basic overview of the of the via messaging program and the releases. Now, uh, next would be where we're going. So uh, what we're going to be investing in, uh, what the team is working on, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be working at providing a smooth transition from exactly where you are today as part of that customer journey, and uh, where we want to take you uh, going forward. So I want to talk a bit more about that virtual assistance platform, and I'll try to explain a bit more in kind of in a bit more detail of what it really is. Now, uh, you may have heard of the CPaaS, so the Avaya One Cloud CPaaS environment. So this is really a communications as a service platform, uh, and this platform, what it does is it enables the development because uh, there's open APIs within this, an extensive amount of APIs within this CPaaS uh, environment. So it enables you to develop your own or it enables us to develop applications and offer those as a service to our customer base. Uh, so primarily the virtual assistance platform is using uh, CPaaS and the CPaaS ar architecture and environment to deliver applications to, to, to the end users and customers. Now the concept of CPaaS is uh, once you are on that platform is you have three options here that we offer you. So one is you can you can actually use it and build your own customized application for your own purposes within that environment. Um, and as well as you have to manage and maintain those applications. Or within the Avaya side, so the next two items within the Avaya side is you can buy um, a platform that we've already developed or will be developing as a service uh, and just subscribe to that service and we manage and maintain that. Or if you want Avaya to customize an application for you, that's a service that we can provide. So we build that, that service as well into, those, uh, uh, into that environment. Now, as I said before, the virtual assistance platform today Currently, our roadmap is to deliver three types of services in that uh, um, that first offer. So the, the virtual voicemail, so we're building that voicemail system today, which is our unified messaging uh, system, uh, and we'll offer that to you as a subscribe service. Um, and we're also offering the virtual operator and virtual agent. So the virtual operator, again, is your traditional auto attendant, and the virtual agent is a is an AI smart attendant uh, with the capabilities. But obviously we have to customize what those menus and sub-menus of that auto attendant actually are. Uh, so we would be building those uh, that customization for you uh, and then you would be using that as a service. Eventually we are investing in the virtual agent and virtual operator to the point where it would move out of that customized build and it would go over to the buy column. So the, you would just buy the service and you could actually, we would build an interface for you to actually build out your own uh, your own menus, let's say, uh, and as well as uh, uh, kind of build out your smart att uh, attendant for that virtual agent. So those capabilities would be available in the future as well. So in a nutshell, uh, you know, we're taking advantage of uh, at that CPaaS environment ourselves and building those applications to offer them to you as a service. 
uh, but the customers are very capable of having access to that environment in building your own applications. So I want to go into a, a little bit more detail around uh, the virtual uh, assistance platform uh, into some of the the products and what we're all, what, what our plan is and what our roadmap is for that. So again, this uh, just to be aware that we're still in the planning phases of these products. We are in the middle of developing that virtual messaging platform. I was able to receive a demo of that platform just recently, so we are progressing and moving along uh, with that platform. Um, one thing to note uh, as well is that the virtual messaging platform, virtual operator, virtual agent, uh, will be rolled out with Avaya's next uh, platform offer of Aura. So that'll be the, the mid-market, what's called the mid-market Aura platform, uh, will be coming out shortly. and Within that platform, the messaging uh, component of that will be the virtual messaging uh, platform. So it is a pure cloud using the CPaaS service, as I mentioned. It's we it will be subscription licensing only. Uh, we will have add-on services um, such as you know you'll have virtual messaging, but the virtual assistant and the virtual agent would be an add-on service to that uh, because virtual messaging is really focused around the the end user uh, um, from a, a, a call uh, coverage perspective, and the virtual agent and virtual operator is the enter is enterprise based, so it would be for the actual business itself. So these are will be add-on services uh, as well. We're looking at two different models. So we're looking at a subscription model comes in two forms. One is, you know, a standard monthly fee that you would subscribe to for that service. Or it could be, which we haven't concluded yet, we're still working on those type of offers, would be a consumption-based model. So uh, it's possible that the virtual messaging would be a standard subscription and the virtual attendant and operator could be a consumption-based model. So uh, meaning that you would you would buy a block of minutes and uh, we, would, uh, we would charge you by the minute for its usage. Uh, with uh, respect to a pure cloud using CPaaS architecture with things like uh, burstability on SIP sessions, uh, there's an unlimited amount of scaling that's available for that. Um, and both uh, we're looking at it from both within country or in, in different regions uh, around that to, to be able to scale it up uh, to millions and millions of users uh, and then burst those SIP capabilities as needed on demand. Um, it's an over-the-top service, so it, it, it integrates to any cloud, hybrid, or premise-based environment, as long as those environments can, can hand off to uh, our CPaaS architecture, CPaaS environment, uh, that service would be fully functional uh, within those existing environments. It really uses the concept of a simplified, unified messaging box. So, you know, things like, you know, mailbox, there's no... There's no concept of a voicemail box any longer. Uh, there's no uh, telephone user interface or TUI that you would have users dial into to, to navigate through a menu, to listen to their messages, delete their messages, and so, so on. So it's very much focused around you know a simplified, unified messaging capability. And what that really means is that we would uh, you would get the call coverage, your greeting would be played. A message would be recorded from the caller, and then that message would be delivered through your multiple channels. So SMTP, SMS, MMS to your, your cloud account channels. Uh, it could be your desk phone. It could be your, your computer. It could be your mobile devices and so on. Uh, so it would actually uh, deliver those messages. It can do things like, like our, our roadmap is really still in progress for it but uh, it could actually deliver the message. It could deliver that uh, the actual file itself, like the MP3 or MP4 or WAV file, whatever format uh, is gonna be available. And, uh, or it could deliver um, a transcribed message uh, to the user as well. So that's an, an add-on service uh, with it. Uh, it'll use that kind of single sign-on for the users to manage their, the, their uh, messaging uh, 
portfolio. And that would be uh, through the existing uh, cloud accounts uh, system that we have today that's available for users sale of their on spaces and, and CPaaS environment. Again, we do plan to integrate that with uh, with Avaya Spaces. So that would be things like when we're talking about storage. So again, because the fact that there's no concept of a mailbox, there's no TUI to, 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 uh, to call into, uh, where is that message stored? Well, we can simply deliver that message to your email account. Your, that would be your, your Office 365 Exchange or uh, to your Google accounts. And those environments would be where the message store actually takes place. Or it could be through Avaya Spaces. So once we complete our roadmap and we deliver this into Avaya Spaces, uh, that message could be delivered. A little pop-up says, oh, you know, notifications can be popped up in Spaces uh, through your browsers. And as well as that message can be delivered to your Spaces account. So you can use your Spaces dashboard to go in and, and pick up your messages as well. Um, there's also questions that we really get around, you know, what about that MWI, right? So, you know, at the end of the day, we look at where we want to go with the next generation and the cloud-based platforms. And for the most part, you know, all those office workers, front-end workers, you know, are really focused around, uh, you know, their desktop, right? So delivering this message to an email basically means that it, you, you get that message faster than it would be delivered to, say, your your phone set or your device or your endpoint. So uh, there's no concept of this MWI. There's no message waiting indicator light on your phone um, to be managed separately, right? So it's because it's delivering into your, your email inbox. You, that's where you spend the majority of your time. So uh, that really is really about delivering that message in the, in the best way possible. We will provide, again, migration path from those legacy platforms. Uh, and this would be, you know, the existing platforms that Avaya supports today, as well as the, the Avaya messaging platform uh, to deliver uh, to this environment. So in, in a nutshell, you know, the virtual messaging is where we are uh, moving our, uh, our resources to and investing in uh, what we believe is that is that future. Now just a little bit about virtual operator and virtual agent. So this, this service is actually available through our CPaaS service today. Uh, it can be purchased as well. It is customizable, meaning that we, you know, we, you have to provide us with the information and we have to go build that virtual operator and virtual and or virtual agent uh, in that in that system so again it's a burstable sip service so you know you can it's it's not like you are you know um having a limited number of ports so you know as as customers have the agent or the you know the auto attendant that's answering those calls uh you know you could go through either seasonal or you could go through time of day uh bursting that's required and this system will will grow and shrink as as the need uh, occurs uh, within that environment. So, um, but again, it's we you know we build the virtual operator using those auto attendant with custom menus or a virtual agent. We have to actually educate and train the system on the natural language uh, that is spoken. And so those today again are available, but it is in a customized format. Going in the future we will be building those interfaces for you to be able to manage that environment yourself. So you can, you can customize it uh, as often as you want, let's say. And again, this is uh, because it's part of that CPaaS environment. It's part of, it's, you know, it's an over the top service that's available. So in a nutshell, that that's really covers our messaging strategy and our uh, roadmap, not only for Avaya messaging, but also our future for that, that virtual assistance platform. And uh, so if there's any questions that you have, feel free to put them in the chat window, or the, sorry, the question window, and uh, I'll get to a couple of them right now, actually. So is Avaya 
IX messaging the same as a via message? And the answer is yes. It was originally Office Links and uh, was renamed a via IX messaging, and then we dropped the IX uh, and it's now called a via messaging. And um, the the actual uh, a via messaging will it ever move away from Windows to Linux? And of course, I said that earlier. Uh, I wasn't actually looking at this window when I said that, so. Uh, but I do get that question a lot. It's really focusing around, um, as I said, it's been it's been a mature product and it's been around 15, 17 years now. So there's a lot of features, functionality and capabilities and flexibilities into this system that it would just be a huge, huge investment of money and time, you know, to to migrate that to, to Linux. And what we've decided is that we would rather take, you know, the money and time to invest it in a cloud-based messaging platform uh, because that's where the future is, is moving to. Uh, next question, federal customers need the ability to display a warning banner for users accessing servers through browsers. So if and when will Avaya messaging support that? Again, as I said, is that we are in the, in the middle right now of migrating Avaya messaging over to our sustaining organization. So the, the amount of development investment that's going in this product is uh, diminishing and diminishing rapidly as we begin to invest in our next generation platforms. So uh, don't like voicemail running on a Windows server, too many security issues, absolutely. And this is one of the reasons why we're investing in the future uh, platform, which would be, you know, a uh, hosted pure cloud environment for us and, and move away from uh, that Windows-based platform. Question is, do the advanced and basic or basic and advanced licenses correspond with CM Core and Power? So yes. So today, uh, if you are on CM uh, Core users, uh, you get a an Avaya messaging basic entitlement. And the power users would get a Avaya messaging advanced uh, entitle, uh, license entitlement. Now that's for perpetual uh, licenses. If you move to Avaya's OneCloud subscription services, so if you convert all your perpetual licenses today over to subscription, uh, you get um, for CM Core and Power, you get all advanced licenses because subscription offers three license levels. There's a basic, a core, and a power. So a basic would give you an Avaya messaging basic, and a core and power license under subscription would give you an advanced messaging user license. Uh, does it support TTY users like the previous VM platforms did? So, so we do have some uh, 508 compliancy on the Avaya messaging platform. Does support uh, full 508 compliancy for for TTY as well. Just reading through the next ones. So maybe you'll get to this, but what's the messaging solution for Avaya Cloud Office by Ring Central? So uh, the Avaya, so the ACO, the Avaya Cloud Office, has a messaging platform in that uh, as well. We are looking from a roadmap and, and use case perspective that they don't have like an auto attendant uh, capability. So the Avaya Virtual Agent and Virtual Operator will actually our plan is to integrate that into the ACO offer as well. So they have existing messaging platform, uh, which uh, is, is fine for us, um, but we will integrate in the future our virtual operator and virtual agent into that uh, offer. Uh, so what about users that want to remain premise based? So again, as I, as I mentioned, is that Avaya messaging, we'll, we will continue to offer this product uh, for the next uh, three to five years, and we'll continue to offer support for that product, you know, uh, two to five years, I guess, beyond that. It's really based on our, our lifecycle management policy. So for customers that still absolutely want a premise-based solution, Avaya messaging is the way to go. 
Uh, and like I said, is that the the differences between the Avaya messaging and the virtual assistants or virtual messaging platform would be around uh, premise-based versus cloud, uh, as well as um, feature richness. You know, the Avaya messaging platform has a large rich capabilities. It would take five years of virtual messaging development to, you know, if, if at all, um, to match the feature richness of Avaya messaging on on-prem. So um, those are, would be the major differences. The advantage of the virtual messaging over Avaya messaging is scalability. Uh, that would be one of the key things that would be uh, be uh, looked at. And as well as that, it's 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 a cloud service, so it doesn't have to be managed, maintained, upgraded, and supported from the customer's perspective. So. Uh, it's just a monthly service for that. And as we roll out new features and capabilities on that cloud-based platform, all the end users would automatically receive those those features and add-on capabilities as well. So will virtual messaging also support faxing? So the answer to that is plain and simple. It, virtual messaging is a messaging platform it's not a faxing platform sometimes we've done this in the capabilities of adding faxing features to messaging platforms but this time around we're keeping this as a pure messaging uh, platform if we decide in the future that we want to add a faxing application with some of those capabilities and integrate it with us that may be something we'd be looking at in the future but not not today So the question is, how do you ensure the voicemail to email delivery, uh, you know, because of it sent to mail relay and the message isn't delivered? So is it smart enough to realize that the recipient never received the message? So again, this is our capabilities of delivering that uh, into um, those applications and using the technology of those applications to make sure that that message is delivered. And this would be things like delivery receipts, uh, as well as, you know, type of uh, other capabilities that we have to integrate into those applications. So uh, the answer is yes, we would be looking to ensure that that message is delivered. Uh, there's also those capabilities of, we, we are still looking at this, but we may be storing that message uh, for a short period of time so that if there's any issues like that, we have the logging and the capabilities to figure out what has taken place in that situation and look to improve that service as time goes by. So uh, question is, uh, and there is, a lot, there is a lot of questions here, so I bear with me as I, as I read through them. With either virtual messaging or Avaya messaging, can we expect any better integration with Avaya system manager like we have with Avaya Aura messaging? So the the answer to that question is we we are looking at when we when we talk about um, as as I mentioned earlier, Avaya messaging was an acquisition, so it wasn't it did not grow up with CM like Avaya Aura messaging did. So uh, late stage, a lot of integration. We we did our best to uh, provide as much as we could uh, with System Manager. Uh, but the next product in terms of our virtual messaging, this is one of the key things that we will be focusing on. And the reason being is that our first go-to-market for the virtual messaging platform will be the mid-market Aura offer uh, that's coming. So uh, our plan is to make sure that we can integrate that uh, as much as possible with System Manager. So for a, a via virtual messaging, oh, so there was a question there to need a TUI with shared phone users in hospitals can't shift this platform without TUI access. So again, looking at future users uh, that are in hospitals and things like that, 
uh, from a messaging delivery perspective. So if that phone rings to that to that patient in that room and it doesn't get answered, there will be a call coverage on that. Uh, when when patients are admitted into the hospitals, it's quite possible that their contact information can be added so that they can be actually programmed to deliver that message to uh, their email account. So those are the some ways that we can look at the way the future is and how those communications can use the end users or the patient uh, can use their communication channels to receive those messages by. So for a via virtual messaging, do you see a two-way two -way integration into Office 365 like we have with messaging? The answer is no. The reason being is that the, the two-way integration really means that, you know, we're storing a message somewhere else in a voicemail box. So that uh, meant that if you got it in your email and you read it or you deleted it, does it actually mark it as read or does it delete it from the voicemail server? The answer is there's no voicemail server. So you're going to get that message in your Office 365 email account uh, and that's where it's going to be stored. So the capabilities of playing it back through through that, uh, moving that to another folder or deleting that message is done right in your email inbox. So will the GUI for managing the virtual messaging platform look similar to Aura messaging? No, the GUI for managing the virtual messaging platform is using the Avaya Cloud Accounts platform that's there today. Uh, so your, your cloud uh, accounts uh, that you would log into uh, will have basically, it's a, there's a number of tabs that are in there today. There will be another tab that will be added to that to that uh, view, uh, that view will be for uh, Avaya virtual messaging. Uh, so it will use both the single sign-on capabilities and authentication uh, as uh, via a cloud accounts that is there today. And uh, the interface will be uh, very similar to that. Next question. So for this custom build for the agent and operator stuff, what is the development done in and what does the development environment look like? So again, that is that capability is there today. There's a separate team and organizations that's using that, that uh, CPaaS architecture and CPaaS APIs to be able to build those out and um, to, to customize what uh, those menus are. Uh, but we will be building uh, our own uh, interface for end customers to be able to go and, and use that themselves. Uh, we haven't, uh, at this point, we are still in the process of uh, determining what that architecture is going to look like. Uh, question, does Avaya messaging alarm via cell? Yes, it does today. So it does use that capabilities today as of, I think, release 10.8. Uh, started using the cell uh, alarming, uh, so that is there today, uh, and um, and has been uh, since 10.8. Uh, so there's a question: Where can I see the interface and the abilities of Avaya messaging? So. Uh, if you reach out to me via email, I can kind of set up an area where uh, uh, a meeting that we can demo some of that capabilities and what the interface looks like today. Uh, but there's also uh, lots of documentation uh, that we can send you as well. So you can see screenshots and things like that. Most of our documentation around the administrator's interface and that is, is uh, that we have screenshots that, that we can show you. How would the cloud version integrate with on-prem CM or SM? So again, uh, vectoring uh, uh, that call coverage from CM directly into CPaaS is already there today. So we we have that capability. So CPaaS will basically give you a number, a phone number for our CPaaS. So your, your CM and SM would be configured to vector to that number uh, for call coverage. Um, and what happens is CM is passing, so you're going, it's going to be SM or the CM SIP uh, portion of it, but it's using SIP to pass 
that uh, to that CPAS number and it's going to pass that information information that we have that would be going to that user uh, so that we'll know which phone number is being answered and who the user is uh, that's being called uh, so we'll be able to know that and pick up the right mailbox uh, the right greeting I should say uh, for that user uh, where can I see or sorry uh, I already read that one uh, what do you do for users that do not have a mailbox on an email system? So if the answer is a customer must have an email address, that is fine. And, and that's that's the capability. Uh, but what happens is that if the customer is on the system uh, through cloud accounts, they have to have a cloud account. So in there, you know, they, they'll have the option of whether that message can be delivered to uh, another phone number or a mobile phone number or any or multiple email accounts uh, and i noticed that came from chris uh, claus so if you want to email me directly chris we can talk more about that uh, very interested in and in, um, in hearing what you have to say about some of those items uh, as we begin to build out that the, the roadmap for the new next generation product so will we be able to use Exchange 2019 for Avaya messaging stories? That is there today. Um, so that's that's capable. For the virtual messaging, uh, again, it's using SMTP forwarding, so it can forward to any email address, you know, whether that's on Exchange or whether that's on Office 365, um, you still have that capability. So will the application software dev deployment be packaged in an OVA so if you're talking about Avaya messaging we don't deliver that as an OVA today so you have to download that you have to install your virtual machine first install your Windows and then on top of that install the Avaya messaging application for the virtual messaging application that's a pure cloud-based service so there's no there's no application to download so you're just going to use your browser and point to uh, our server and uh, you'll have your your interface will come up through your block browser at this point we don't have we don't plan to have a downloadable client for that uh, for that application some voicemail boxes are shared so no one email to get the message so um, you can you can send those messages to a uh, multiple email addresses uh, as well as uh, we can deliver again things like um, avaya spaces and that we can deliver those messages to those so other users who may be able to to have a um, a via space that all those users can connect into securely um, those messages can be delivered there so each the users can go in uh, the shared users can go into that space and and obtain that message or those messages how are we doing for time okay so we'll have uh, I think uh, we'll have about five more minutes and then I'll leave some time for Julie to come back in here Uh, one second. When uh, the email with the voicemail message is attached, is it just a WAV file or is the email specifically formatted with playback controls and transcriptions? So again, that that level of details still in the works, but you know, we will we will have an option to deliver either a WAV file or an MP3 formatted file uh, with the email. So that email will also have the capabilities of having a transcription service added on to that so the 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 voice message is transcribed and delivered as part of the body of the email uh, so again your your desktop would be the one that's used uh, so your playback controls would be used and uh, to do to do uh, play that message back that's in the email we also look at 
uh, how is that email actually formatted? So one of the things that we're looking at right now, right from day one, is allowing you know the end users, customers, or so to format what that how that message is going to look and when it's delivered. So uh, it'll it'll have that capabilities. So what is the Avaya solution for small premise voicemail under 100 users uh, non-cloud? So uh, today, the only messaging platform that is offered is Avaya Messaging. Uh, and that can be for, you know, uh, I think 20 users, 10 users, uh, all the way up to 80,000 users. Uh, that would be the only non-cloud voice messaging offer that would be available. Um, the ACO, uh, so that would be a, another offer uh, that would take both, uh, that would also take your 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 UC as well as uh, your messaging offer uh, for those small users as well. Um, and then for cloud, it would simply be the Avaya virtual messaging. Uh, in the future, will Avaya be moving away from on-prem installation to only cloud offering? So I can speak on behalf of the messaging platform, and that is, yes, it would be a subscription-based, cloud-based offer. Uh, keeping track of the roadmaps that's going on today uh, would be Aura, like in 10.1 Aura, I think that is only going to subscription. Uh, so they'll still be on-prem and in cloud-based or managed service but uh, that would be we're moving away from perpetual licensing uh, as you can see that that progression to cloud continues to move forward so uh, in the end it it would be probably uh, safe to say that yeah uh, cloud services would be where we're moving towards Uh, do any of the messaging platforms have hospitality package that would connect to hotel PMS system? The answer is no. Um, we do not, at this point, plan to uh, invest in that. What happens is that there are so many uh, PMS systems that are out there today that there are companies that offer uh, a service uh, or um, let's call it like a, a gateway into uh, a lot of those different PMS systems that are available today uh, for hotel chains. So the idea would be for us to partner with uh, or like through our our Dev Connect program to partner with some of these um, hospitality providers that um, that do have like a, a let's say an interface or a gateway into multiple hotel PMS systems. Uh, because it's very expensive for us to be able to man manage and maintain those a large number of those PMS systems that we would have to qualify against. So our, our future would be if we did offer something like this, that we would partner with a PMS system uh, provider, and um, or at least a, a company that provides the the integration into multiple PMS systems. Uh, if we are on a cloud offered by a business partner, is Avaya messaging our only option? If we are on a cloud offered by a business partner, is Avaya messaging the only option? Yes, I mean that is the the only messaging today that is is part of that offer. Um, but we will allow, you know, in the future we'll allow once we open the the Avaya virtual messaging uh, offer, uh, we will allow our partners to to resell that as well. Uh, from my perspective, we should have stayed with AAM. Uh, yes, the problem with um, the AAM is that prior to us uh, uh, coming on board and prior to the as an acquisition, a, the, the development team had stopped on AAM for a couple of years, so uh, it was it was put in sustaining. I think myself way too early, uh, and uh, we but we had to we had to make a decision as whether we wanted to catch up on all that lost of investment, you know, things like Office 365, it does not integrate with that. So, or to use the Avaya messaging platform instead that already had that capability. So 
unfortunately that decision had to be made that way. Uh, will you have a French language option? So in the virtual messaging platform, yes, we, we will be offering that in, in, again, in multiple languages, G14 as a minimum, uh, but we will, uh, you know, continue to uh, enhance that as it moves along. But yes, uh, it'll be, the virtual platform will be offered in multiple languages. So that kind of concludes the the questions if uh, if you did put your name and um, your contact information and you allow IAUG to share that with me um, I'll get a list of these questions as well and I'd uh, be able to contact you directly if you do if you uh, if I can respond to, to the remaining questions that I haven't been able to today but for now uh, I do thank you very much for your time your questions were really good and we'll continue uh, we'll continue to uh, to communicate with you on what we're doing with our future and our roadmaps. So thank you very much. And I'll pass it over to you, Julie. Okay, great. Well, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to speak to us today. And as a reminder to the audience, this webinar was recorded and will be available for you to view on demand. You will receive an email with a link to the recording within the next 24 hours. To continue, Discussions such as this and access more technical conversations and resources, we encourage you to visit our website at IAUG.org and check out our IAUG product councils. The product councils meet monthly and provide members a forum to hear from Avaya and discuss current technical topics relevant to all members. Please make sure to complete the short online evaluation that'll pop up as you exit the webinar and from all of us at IAUG, Thank you and have a great rest of your day.